This is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I'm going to show you how to recover data from a dead laptop or desktop computer. Okay, so there's a couple things that you're going to need in order to recover the data off of a dead computer or uh, laptop or desktop computer, no matter what kind of computer you have. Um, there are a couple different ways to do this, but I'm just going to show you the way that's been working for me for many, many years. Um, this is what I have here is a cable set that you can purchase. They're usually about $20, $25 or less. Um, I will put a link in the description to this product or a very similar product on Amazon and Best Buy. Uh, both in the description. So if you want to, to look into this, I would check those links down below. Uh, what I have here is a, basically it's like a converter cable. It's a USB, it's got USB on one end, and then it has this little multi-adapter on the other end. And what this allows you to do is hook up any type of hard drive. So whether it's a desktop IDE type drive, whether it's a laptop IDE type drive, or it comes with a converter to plug in a SATA cable and hook up a SATA type hard drive. Um, so this will basically work for any type of hard drive. Any of your newer computers are going to have this SATA type, and of your older computers are going to have this IDE, all the pins. Um, so this is a very, very, very handy cable. I would recommend having this uh, whether you are you know, have a crashed computer right now or even just to prepare for the future so you can easily get your data off quickly. Um, I would recommend just getting this and having it on hand. Um, just a, another part of the adapter here, it comes with this power adapter and this is actually to power up that hard drive. Um, so it has a couple different converter uh, uh, power adapters here that you'll need for different types of hard drives as well. Um, the one I have on here right now is for a SATA type um, hard drive. So um, this all comes together as one kit. Now the other option that you have to recover data from a dead computer is some type of a um, hard drive case and you can purchase these again I'll put some links down below to some various kinds of um, hard drive cases basically you take the hard drive out of your computer put it in this case and then it gives you a USB connection to plug into a working computer and get your data off um, this one here is an old uh, IBM type uh, deal here this works for older laptop drives obviously the the ones that uh, you'll need to get a matching case for whatever type of hard drive you have. And I'll show you how to identify that uh, once we get into the uh, tutorial here. So, so that's the things that you'll need, one or, the, one or the other of these. And then I'll show you how to get the hard drive out of a laptop. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to get one out of a desktop as well. Okay, so I just have a laptop flipped over here. So we're looking at the bottom of the laptop. There's several different access panels here. Um, normally with different models, there are different places and areas on the back, but uh, you should have some access to the hard drive. Um, in this case, I've got them labeled here. Um, this has a little memory module on it. So I know this is a hard drive access panel. Um, this one over here is actually, this particular model has two hard drive spots. This is a hard drive access panel. And this one here is also labeled with the little disc symbol, uh, stacked up discs or platters, which represents a hard drive. So we're just gonna open this panel up to get access to that hard drive. Okay, and so I'm using a little multi-tool here to prove a point. Um, you really don't need any special tools to do this. So uh, any Phillips screwdriver will work for this. Uh, you could even use a small flathead if you had to. So um, no special tools required. Once you get that access panel open, usually there's just a couple screws and it will pop or lift out uh, some way or another. And then we have access to our hard drive. Um, again, these are all gonna be different. So you just wanna pay attention here and try to figure out how it's designed and, sit and fit in there. Most of the newer ones have some type of a little flap here that you pull up on. And so once you pull up on that, that disengages the connector and then it slides out. And so here we have our little hard drive. This is a Tachi brand. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure if this was the original hard drive that came in this laptop. But and so it's in a proprietary connector or casing. So you can see it's in this silver case here. And there's a couple screws on each side. There's a screw here and here, as well as here and here. And so I'm going to go ahead and just take those out off camera. And then the hard drive is actually going to lift up out of this. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the four screws removed from the little case. So again, those four screws on the corners there. And at that point, the hard drive should just come right out. Um, this is an HP brand, but no matter what brand you have, it should have a similar type case like this. Most laptops do. 
You also might have a proprietary connection that's on the end of the hard drive here. So you see this little connector with all the pins on it. That actually comes off as well. So I'm just going to kind of carefully wiggle that off. And uh, in case you have worked with the computers or electronics in the past, you always want to make sure that you're grounded. You don't want to have static electricity built up and you never should be touching any of the backs of the circuitry or connectors or anything like that. So I'm holding it safely on the edges of the hard drive, which is the safest place to hold it. Okay, so at this point we are ready to connect our cable. And as I showed you in the beginning of the video, you've got um, this little multi-connector here head on the, uh, which has the USB cable on the other end. And what we're going to do in this case, we have a SATA type connection. You can see the SATA data port and the SATA power connection there. That's what it'll look like. If you have a bunch of pins here, you'll just use the appropriate connector on your um, little adapter here. And so in this case, we're going to connect our SATA cable, which will only go on one way to our adapter. And then we're going to connect the other end of the SATA data connection to our hard drive. Again, they only go on one way. Okay, and then our little kit here also comes with a power connector, which has a little adapter for the SATA type connection. And we need to hook that up as well. Again, it only goes on one way, so if I have it right here. And it'll go on just like okay, that. so we've got our hard drive all ready to plug in here. All our cables are connected. And basically, we have two things that we we'll have to connect. We've got our USB connection from our little adapter here, and we've got our power connection. So I'd like to, I usually recommend doing this in a certain order. Um, you, you, you probably can do it either way, but this is the way that I've done it, and it's working for me. Generally, I would plug in your power connection first, so we want to power up the hard drive. Once your hard drive has power to it, go ahead and plug in your USB cable to your computer. Obviously, you need to have a working computer and that be powered on. Once you do that, you'll get a little red light here that will pop up, letting you know that the uh, USB cable is connected. And at this point, it's starting to read the drive, and you should hear it pop up on your computer. So I'll take you over to the computer and show you kind of uh, what we're looking at on the computer, what will pop up, and how to actually access the data off of your hard drive, where it's at, what folders it's in, and, and how to copy it onto your working computer. Okay, so once you get that hard drive plugged into the computer using that little USB adapter there, you should see something pop up on the screen letting you know it's been connected. Here on Windows 8, you'll see these little messages pop up in the corner of the uh, right-hand corner of the screen. We can go ahead and close those out. If you're using Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7, you may see an autoplay window pop up in the middle of the screen, in which case you can choose to open the folder and view the files. That'll be the choice to select there. Here in Windows 8, we're just going to open up our file explorer, uh, clicking on our yellow libraries icon at the bottom there and this will give us our main computer view or this PC window um, as you can see here we've got a couple new hard drives that showed up uh, this is a system reserved little partition that was on the hard drive of the old computer the main one that we're concerned about here is our HP or main drive and you can tell that it's uh, the larger size so we're going to go ahead and open that up Okay, and once we're in the hard drive, looking in the hard drive here, you'll see uh, some various folders. You may see a bunch of other folders here. You can pretty much disregard everything except for the users folder. That's really the only one we're concerned with. We don't care about the program files or the Windows system files. We only care about our data. You cannot transfer programs or backup programs from a, 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 a broken hard drive or, or a, a computer that way. Um, programs do have to be reinstalled. So the only thing we're gonna get here is all of our data from the user account. Alright, so once you've opened up that user folder, you'll see a list of the user accounts that are on this that were on the old computer. Now you may just only have one user account listed here. It could be something like owner or admin or just your first name or whatever you used when you set the old computer up originally. Um, in my case here I have a couple main user accounts, the SSL family dad, kids, and mom. You also see a public and a temp folder here. Um, generally, we can disregard those. The only time you need to recover data out of the public user account is if you're using a program like QuickBooks or something like that that stores data um, in that public folder. So what we're going to do here is just check into one of these user accounts. So if you open up the user account folder, double click there, um, this opens up a list of all of the folders that were contained under that user account. So this is where all of your data is. Your contacts, everything that was on your desktop, documents, anything in your downloads folder, uh, all your favorites from Internet Explorer are here, links, all your music, pictures, saved games, searches, and all your videos. So you have a couple choices. You can individually drag each one of these folders and put them 
uh, on your desktop or back in a location that you want on the new uh, computer or working computer here. Or what I recommend is just go back to your user account folder and just go ahead and drag that whole that whole user account folder out onto your desktop. Uh, you may get a permissions uh, error here because these folders are were owned by a, a different computer, but uh, you can go ahead and override that and just click continue. And so that's going to start processing and copying all of the data from that user account into or onto the working computer. Um, and that's really pretty much it. That's all you need to do to recover the data from that old system. Now you have a couple choices. You can take that old hard drive and put it in a drawer somewhere and keep it as a backup of this data if you'd like to, just as an extra backup. Um, if you're planning on repairing the uh, computer, obviously you need to put it back in the system and have it sent over to your local uh, repair place so they can get that fixed up for you. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's all you need to do to recover the data from a non-working computer. Um, if you have any questions about the process, uh, I try to answer all the questions that I can uh, in comments. Please throw those down below in the uh, comment section. Please hit thumbs up on the video if you found it useful or informational at all. I always do appreciate that. And follow along if you'd like to. We've got lots of other sustainable projects and activities going on all the time. You can check us out over at uh, simplesuburbanliving.com or, of course, subscribe to any one of our YouTube channels. I'll put links to all that here at the end of the video. Um, We'd love to have you follow along and check out some of our other videos as well. So I'll put some of our popular uh, videos here at the end of, the, uh, the end of this uh, clip as well. So as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.